This is a creation myth from the Rwanda area of Africa. From the 1400s, there has been a centralized kingdom, but this control was made shaky because of the rivalry between two deeply divided societies. The more elite pastoralist Watutsi and the subordinate agricultural Hutu. This creation story is a common version of the official royal creation myth. The world was formed in two realms, above and below, by Amana the Creator. People living in the above world were happy and fruitful. However, there were two sisters who were unable to bear their own children. One of the sisters brought an offering of honey, hides, milk, and banana beer to Amani. She clapped three times to summon him, and then praised him for his power and generosity. Then she begged him for a child. Amana agreed, but only if the woman would keep his gift to her a secret. She agreed, so Amana made a small human figure from clay and his own saliva. For nine months, the woman let the clay figure sleep in a pot of milk, which she refreshed twice a day for nine months. The baby wakened, and she and her husband were happy. The woman went back to Amana twice more, and twice more she was given clay babies. Their clay children were exemplary, and all the other parents were envious of the woman's skilled and beautiful children. The woman's sister was especially hurt by her good fortune. The sister was also suspicious of how the children had came to be, since the woman had never been visibly pregnant. So the sister got the woman drunk on banana beer, and the woman spilled her secrets. Filled with hope, the next morning the sister gathered her offerings and went to Amana to ask for her own clay child. The woman begged her sister not to go, but Amana already knew. When the woman went to Amana, he was angry. Because she had broken her promise, her children were now doomed to the underworld. The three siblings, the oldest boy named Kigwa, the middle boy named Lututsi, and their youngest sister named Ninya Batutsi, all eked out a hard life on earth. They were resourceful despite their misfortune. Up in heaven, their mother and sister had prayed to Amana on the behalf of their children. Touched, Amana gifted them delicious fruits and seeds, and built a bellows and hammer, and they learned to forge metals as tools. They shared their new knowledge of agriculture with the other banished people of Earth and gave them seeds to plant. Because of his kindness, Kigwa was made a king. Despite the success, the three siblings had no equals to marry. Amana told Kigwa to marry Ninibatutsi, and together they had six children, three sons and three daughters. Kigwa refused to allow Latutsi to marry one of his own daughters, so Latutsi asked Imana who he could marry. Imana told him to travel to another country called Karagwe, and soon Latutsi became wealthy. He sent an envoy to ask for one of Kigwa's daughters in exchange for goods but they did not tell Kigwa who was to marry his daughter. Kigwa brought his daughter to Karagwe, where he discovered who had the rights to marriage. Kigwa gave his daughter to the Tutsi, and the younger brother became king too. From then on, the tradition of exchanging women in marriage was established.